Hey, Audacious Beast, welcome back to my channel. My name is Scotty Allen Day. Well, today we're going to be talking a little bit about, well, seven days stranded on a raft. Four days stuck in the woods in the middle of nowhere. 72 hours in the desert. Challenges. But are creators damaging the environment? Are they, what are they doing to reduce their environmental footprint from these outdoor challenges? And are they following the outdoor code? Now, the outdoor code is established by the Boy Scouts, but I, I firmly believe that it should be followed by just about any outdoorsman. And the outdoor code is, goes as following. As an outdoorsman or outdoorswoman, I will do my best to be clean in my outdoor matters, to be careful with fire, be considerate in the outdoors, and be conservation-minded. Now, that is a very solid code to be able to follow when you're doing any kind of a challenge. But what I've been seeing lately with Mr. Beast and Dangy Brothers, when they do their outdoors, when they do their challenges outdoors, well, Dangy Brothers, most of their stuff is pretty messy. And Mr. Beast is out there with a bunch of the rappers, and they normally have a bucket that they're going to do their duty in. And, well, Dangy Brothers, I've seen them do the same thing. So you have, you have a restroom bucket that's sitting in the middle of nowhere. And during the day when they're boarding and walking around and doing whatever, you know, challenges or whatever they may be doing, how many times has those buckets been knocked over? Or if you're having 15, 16 people with your camera crew and everybody else, and they're digging uh, foxholes to, to do their duty in, how much are they, are they covering it up correctly so it will break down quickly and not do as much damage to the environment. Now, most of the time, most people think, well, if I go out in the woods and I need to poop, I'll just dig a hole and do my duty and just cover it up. Well, that's that's kind of different if you're just doing it once. Or I could just go behind a tree. Well, yeah, that's different if you're only doing it once. If you're going to be there for two or three days, if you're going to be there for 72 hours, if you're going to be there for a seventy, I mean, a week, you need to plan a better way for facilities. And by me, by me saying that is, well, if you're in the outdoors or you're in the middle of a desert, at least have a cabana with a composting toilet to where you can be able to pack it all out. My other question is, are they packing everything out? Now, I know Mr. Beast had to uh, fill back in all the holes that they dug when they did their Antarctic, uh, Antarctica challenge. And that's probably because of the people that they took on, that took them on that expedition absolutely stated that they had to refill any and all holes before they, before they came back. But ever since then, we haven't seen anything that Mr. Beast has done or the Dengue Brothers have done. They do before, and then they do the challenge, and then they do an after showing that they have not done any damage to the area that they were at. And that's really simple. Are they policing and picking up all the litter? Are they making sure that that tent pole that's broken is packed back out? Or the pizza boxes are packed back out? Are they making sure that the fire that they had is totally out? That's the thing, because they're not showing an example, because if they don't show an example for a channel that they have now, what about that other channel that has that new group of people that's going out to do this type of challenge so they can be able to copycat their video to be able to get views, but then they leave a mess behind them. Now, if you don't believe me about messes, I've seen videos in the past where Mr. Beast has done challenges with 100 people, where Dangy Brothers has done challenges, and where other websites have done challenges, and somebody else has gone to that site a, a week or two later, and it's a total mess. It's a total pigsty. It's 
the big boulder that's out there that didn't have any writing on it now has writing on it saying somebody from their crew is here. So that that really gives it really bothers me that people are not paying attention to what they're doing and making sure that they're not leaving a trace. That they're making sure that the environment that they left remains the environment that they that they that that the uh, environment is clean or cleaner than what they came and saw it. And which brings me to this to this next video, and I'm going to do another video on uh, on this particular challenge or on these survival challenges in general. Uh, and now they did a stranded on a raft or building a houseboat on a raft, and every day or every hour they they get supplies and they can be able to uh, build stuff and they can be able to, uh, you know, uh, they build, they can be able to build stuff and improve their way of living and that sort of thing. And both of these two videos, one on Dangy Brothers and one on uh, Mr. Beast, both had a bucket that they used to use the facilities. And I think in Mr. Beast's video, somebody had kicked the the bucket. That doesn't sound right. But somebody, it was either Dangy Brothers or it was Mr. Beast, there was another video that somebody actually kicked the bucket into the water and dumped the, the contents into the water. So now you're dumping raw sewage into the water. This is something that a lot of towns are trying to prevent from happening is raw sewage being dumped into their reservoirs. And most of the lakes that all these people are doing these challenges on are reservoirs. Now, knowing what I've seen, when they're bringing uh, in like eight, uh, eight by eight rafts, why can't they have one raft that they could bring in that has an outhouse bolted onto the raft? A porta potty bolted onto the raft. Everybody goes in, they do, they do their boot and duty. Three days later, they unbolt it. The, the boat takes it back to shore. The, the uh, outhouse guys take care and pump it all out and clean it all up. And then they ship it back out and they put it back with the raft challenge again. That's much more sanitary and it protects the environment much better than using a bucket that they have a chance to ruin the environment. My other question is, is when they're doing these challenges, are they making sure that there's no, uh, you know, screws and nails and that sort of thing being dropped into the water? Are they making sure that their trash is being kept on the raft and not in the water? Now, Mr. Beast was on one that had, um, it was a pretty bad rainstorm. And so how much of the uh, candy wrappers from his feastables have blown off into the water? That's my question. How much of the gear that they had blew off into the water? Dangy Brothers had just a cold night. I don't think they had any kind of a storm. And there was another one that did have another storm. And they, they had their people trying to clean up all the stuff that was blown off of their boat. So how much of that stuff has gone down to the bottom of the, of the lake? And that turns around and damages their environmental footprint. So how careful are these YouTube creators when they're making these videos and trying to reduce their environmental footprint while creating a viral video. Now, Mr. Beast just did a video with, uh, I mean, blowing up uh, with all kinds of dynamite, and that was a fun video. But that's what spurred me to start talking about, are they doing enough to clean up afterwards? Are they doing enough to reduce their environmental footprint from having fun with explosives? Are they doing enough to uh, make sure that everything is cleaned up? Everything, that there's nothing left? Well, we don't know. It'd be a nice, be a nice way just to put it at the end of the video that they've shot. 
and uh, uh, before and after, or before and in the middle and all done. Just, just a little bit after that, and it shows their their environmental footprint that they care about the area that they went and they did their challenges. Now, I think I think it's great, but some people are going to think it's dumb. But you know what? I don't want to be the one that's going to go hike in the woods when somebody's had 15 people at a campsite and they. I mean, it's. It's a mess. We have enough problems with that, with another problem that we have, but you know what, I don't want to bring that up, but if you're able to be able to pack it in and pack it out, why are we leaving anything behind? So that's my, that's my question, that's my concern today. I just figured I'd get it off my chest, bring it out into the open. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this in the, video, in the comment section below. Uh, if you liked the video, like, I mean, give it a thumbs up, share it. If you're new here, get that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you don't miss another video. And until next time, keep on rocking.